Objects in Affinity Designer can take a single stroke or fill, but they can also take multiple strokes and multiple fills on the same object. So the creative possibilities here are endless and you can, for instance, layer lots of strokes of different widths on top of each other on the object, apply different gradients, different blend modes on each of those strokes. And you can do the same with fills which can be uh, applied to the object too. So you have all kinds of combinations of creative effects for some quite startling results. Okay, so we just want to do a quick mock-up of this uh, quite stylish uh, logo effect which uses multiple strokes. So first of all, I'll jump to the artboard uh, 2 here, which uh, is a blank artboard, and I'll just paste my object onto there that I want to work against. Now, just a reminder, um, we have in the swatches panel, for instance, uh, this outer ring is a stroke, and this inner ring, or, or circle shall I say, is a solid black um, fill. So at the moment, um, this has got a solid black fill with no stroke. And if I wanted to introduce a single stroke, I can just enable this stroke colour selector and pick a colour and give it a width. There you go, that yellow stroke's coming in there. But I'll do something slightly different here. I'll just go back and reset that to no fill. And I'll show you the appearance panel. And this is a new panel in Design 1.7. If I select it, I'll see that I have this arrangement of um, fill and stroke uh, in front of me, similar to the swatches panel, but in list view. So what we're able to do here is introduce new strokes to the design. And I'll first of all just move the swatches panel out here to enable me to access my uh, swatches for colouring the strokes. And we'll jump back to the appearance panel now and I'll introduce um, my first strokes. First of all, we'll edit this initial stroke and we'll just change the colour of that to be like a pink colour. And I'll continue adding strokes to introduce different stroke colours and different stroke widths. And slowly you see on the page that we are uh, building up and layering these strokes with increasing widths as we go. Now one important thing to note is that the order of this uh, fill and stroke arrangement, it takes the same principles as a layer stack in the sense that uh, this fill is on the very top of the object and these strokes are uh, increasingly behind the uh, the object as we look. So this one's very the bottom and, and this stroke is at the top. So therefore increasing stroke width means you've got a kind of a, um, a gradation, increasing gradation of strokes as you go. Just give this one a 240 point width and we'll introduce Another one, I'm just moving this one to the bottom because I want this one to be light blue. And we'll give this 300 points. And uh, final one we'll add is similar to these two dark ones is that one there. And we'll just move that to the bottom and give that a width of 360. So as well as assigning colour to the stroke uh, using the swatches or colour panel and uh, changing the, uh, the stroke width with the uh, stroke panel, I'll also be able to just change the blend mode of that particular stroke and that uh, influences how the, that colour of that stroke uh, blends with the strokes underneath. Uh, but a particularly nice effect is the ability to change the blend mode from normal to erase. I'll do that for these coloured strokes. I'll just click through here. So that when the rectangle behind gets selected and we change the colour of that rectangle, 
to say uh, yellow, you'll see that the arrays blend mode cuts out the uh, strokes which we'd uh, selected previously. Okay, so in this example, we're using an example where we use a single uh, fill and multiple strokes. So I just want to show you how you can introduce multiple fills onto an object as well. Now, we could introduce multiple fills onto this same object, but for clarity, we've just chosen multiple strokes only. So if we jump to a different artboard, we're going to use the same logo as we had previously, but we'll just jump to this rectangle because this is where we can show multiple fills on the same object. And just to show that, if we go to the fill tool, you can see that for this particular fill, you can see the uh, gradient shown there. And as we jump to a different fill, you can see a different gradient. So we have multiple gradients on the same object, all working in different ways. And you can have different levels of transparency there too. So I'll just delete these two and just see if we can get that uh, roughly made the same. I'll click Add Fill. And then with the Fill to selected, I'll just drag across the page. Just add the colour in there. And then add a third fill. And I'll apply the gradient there. And we'll just do a gradient from, say, uh, down here up to here. So you can see you get different kind of effects with the uh, gradients all working different ways. And incidentally, uh, you'll be able to just control the levels of opacity because we have opacity running from 100% there down to 0%. So I can bring this back up and introduce more color at the end of that gradient. Similarly with this one, at this end we have 100% opacity, so I could drop that one down and just to reduce the amount of purple in there. So quite powerful effects. One final thing to just tell you about is the uh, little white dot that shows uh, preceding this stroke um, and this fill here. Now this indicates the currently active stroke and the currently active fill. So when any one of these is enabled, uh, you'll be changing that particular uh, color uh, blend mode and uh, st uh, stroke width, for instance. So you can change those around, then change the colors as you go. It gives you better management of all the strokes on your object.